to call this class. Okay. Uh, metals, uh, metal adjoining of metals. We ask ourselves, uh, what is adjoining? We talked last week, we talked about adjoining, different types of joining metals. You say that there are electrical methods, we have uh, and mechanical methods and thermal methods. So we, we, we talked about so many of them. Uh, we talked about uh, soldering, we talked about welding, we talked about adhesives. And today we are doing a summary on the joining of metals. So uh, as you can see on my screen, I have notes. Notes on the metals, uh, methods of joining metals. So we, uh, as we had said that joining, the joining process can be grouped into three main groups according to how the joint is achieved. So we said we have adhesive, we have soldering, brazing, and welding. That is now the electrical method. And we also have the mechanical joining by means of fasteners. So today our major aim is to look at the mechanical joining of metals. Now, uh, adhesives, uh, we talked about adhesives last week, and we said that almost any material, including the similar metals, can be joined by adhesives. And then curing methods, uh, what some of the curing methods are, we have cooling using the thermoplastics. We have chemical reactions, so that is two parts of, the, that is a, a, epoxy and polyester. We have operations and what those are the curing methods, the methods that are used that enables the adhesives to take place. And then we also talked about uh, now the groups and the types. Now you can look at now the groups of uh, the materials joined and the groups are there. Uh, we talked about uh, groups, animal glues, they are used to join. Uh, uh, the, the animal glues, they are used to join adhesives. The, 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 the adhesive substance that is got from there, we have animal hides or bones. Like the fish, we have casins and from milk. And then we have blood from albumin. What are the, 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 the materials joined using these types of materials that can be manufactured from there, from these raw materials? We have wood. You can be, we use these uh, types of joining materials to join wood, paper, fabrics, and leather. We have other, other substances obtained from vegetable glue. And from vegetable glues, we get starch, the, the, the dextrin, and the soya beans. They can help in, in forming uh, things that can join. They can join paper and fabric. Uh, uh, and then we have natural resins. Then we have, that is, butamines and uh, gum albric, uh, uh, then they can be used for laying floor blocks, uh, like the, the tiles, uh, felt, then paper and fabric. And then we have inorganic cements, uh, the group of inorganic cements, the raw materials are sodium silicate, porcelain cement, a plaster and of Paris. And then they can be used to join uh, things under uh, foundry malls and then building industries. They can be used in building industries. And then we have el 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 elastomata materials, that is this are like natural rubber, that is latex solvent, synthetic rubber. They used to join the things like footwear, industry, polyester, wood, paper, fabrics, and then booking. And then we have uh, synthetic polymers like the polyvinyl, uh, alka the, the alcetate, and then the vinyl. Those are all the raw materials that can be obtained from the synthetic polymer materials. We have the acrylics, anaerobics, we have the uh, phenol, urea, uh, melanin. All these are the raw materials that can be obtained from there. And then we have the metals that can join. They can join metals, rubber, PVC, PVC are plastics. And then we have polyester, polymid, metal, glass, ceramics. All those are there things that can be joined. And then now, service, service requirements. What are the service requirements needed in the uh, adhesives? We have the strength required, the temperature range in service, the resistance to water or moisture. Then the working properties of adhesives are also important. Method, preparation, and use. 
uh, and then they, they also need their the, what are the characteristics they have a strong life they have a dry uh, the, the dry time the odor the toxicity we we'll talk about them and then the soldering when you talk about soldering we said it is the joining of two parts of materials it can be similar materials or dissimilar materials but by using a, a, a solder gun also a solder wire to, to join meaning a solder must wet that is it must melt that's why that's why we say it must wet that is the the alloy with the metal to be joined and at the same time have a freezing range which is much lower so that the work itself is no danger of being melted and then the solder must also be mechanically strong must produce a mechanically strong joint so the brazing is another uh, is, is another kind of uh, soldering so brother, we say it's a sister of soldering, and we say it, it brazing is now when it happens at a very high degrees. Like now you can see the degree is above 450 degrees Celsius. That is a brazing. Brazing uh, uses a, a, a more advanced way of soldering. We said soldering is majorly for the low power, that is for electronics. And then welding, welding is another one. Then we have arc welding, electrical resistance welding, thermochemical welding, and radiation welding. And then we have arc welding, a process that is metallic well arc welding. And then arc welding processes, another one is a budget arc welding. And then we have gas shield welding. And then we have the MIG process that is under arc welding still. Then the CO2 process, plasma arc welding, those are still under arc welding. So the summary of arc welding processes are here. For metallic arc, that is the shielding is flex. And then the, uh, the temperature is, the current is about 25 to 350. And then the users, where do we use the metal arc welding? Uh, the users are the pressure, uh, pressure vessels, pipes, and ships. And then the submerged arc, the process for the submerged arc we use uh, it's also shielding is flex and then we have uh, the thin plates pressure vessels boilers pipes ships bridges those are now the big metallic things that are used for submerged arc welding the mig we use it in middle gauge items like the car body and repair we have the tig that is the inert gas is used for welding we use them on aircraft instrument industries uh, that have aluminium, copper, and nickel, nickel, then stainless steel sheet. Then plasma acts in inert gas for thick plate and stainless steel. Those are the types of arc welding. Then we go to the electric resistance welding. Now the, the examples are the spot welding, projection welding, seam welding, bat welding, and then flash welding, elco slag welding, induction welding, oxytylene welding, thermite welding, laser welding, those, uh, those under radiation now, solid state welding, friction welding, that is under solid state again welding, and then explosive welding. Those are the types of welding. Now, the structure of wells, you can see when welding has happened, now how it happens. We have the coarse structure in the overheat zone of the plate, the coarse uh, as cast weld metal. So this coarse as cast weld metal is the added part, the added part. So it has this added part, this one you can see that the one I'm pointing, is the one that is used to join, to join this part and that part. Then welding of plastics, you can see uh, we have hot gas welding, steam and spot welding, electrofusion welding, stitch welding, jig welding, and friction welding. Then uh, oh, jo joining metals, uh, we can also, the, the videos there that are attached. And then we are done with that slide and it was a summary. It was a summary of uh, that welding. 
it was a summary of weld of of the joining of metals and materials remember that we started talking about the joining of materials last week so today we just had a summary of that so that we can get into our new topic our new topic today is about workshop machinery uh, you realize that uh, from your syllabus we are moving steadily and we are covering almost every, everything and i want to give you a task as student that uh, we should be doing the revision at the same time as we read so uh, after we have covered something like we did the, the, the we have done, done the joining of materials we have finished the joining of materials and uh, we uh, since we have and also we, we we talked about the metal tools and workshop tools measuring and uh, marking out so when you come across these uh, questions in past papers remember we are revising for our next exam when we come across these questions in past papers make sure that you are able make sure that you are able to do what make sure that you are able to do them and uh, if there is any problem you may you bring them when we have the next class so that we can discuss sometimes it might be difficult for us to be able to find time for revision so use them the, the time that you have so that you can do uh, the revision and go through the notes i always post the notes so today's class we are going to go through the workshop machinery i'll take you through the workshop machinery for a short while and then we are going to have a discussion we'll go back to the portal and have a discussion i've already posted uh, things to be discussed there I would like people to comment there and give their ideas of what we have learned under the workshop machinery and any other idea you can also create or bring it up. So there is there is there is there is a discussion that I've created that we must participate. It is a regulation that we have to participate in the discussion. So guys, uh, be ready as we start uh, on the workshop machinery. So I'm bringing up a, a slide. So when we talk about workshop machinery, what do we mean? When we are in a workshop, we have different types of machines. We have machines that do different things. The main things that are done by machines in the in the workshop is milling. Milling is is, is the same as grinding. Uh, milling. Uh, then we have grinding. Then shaping of machines. We have shaping of machines. I remember you guys. Uh, if you are among the lot that uh, went to IBM. There's a time we went for a trip at IBM. I don't know if you are among them or you had not joined the university. We went to, we visited the technical university and we looked at the machines that they have there. So those are the CNN machines. Those are machines that are used in the workshop, the CNC machines. So we are going to go through the machines that are used in the workshop and their importances. So I start off, machines play a very important role in the workshop where metal working or work woodworking tasks are performed. They enable speed processes in the workshops and enhance the accuracy and the efficiency of the process. So with the tools, the bulk wood and the metal processing requirements in workshop can be met with ease. So today, various kinds of equipment are available in the market. By installing these various tasks are, are like cutting, shaping, drilling, etc., which are to be carried out on the harder wood and the metal surfaces can easily be accomplished. So the workshop machines, what are these workshop machines that we are going to discuss about? Now the workshop machines are a bit different from industrial. So industrial are configured to handle heavy duty applications in robust industrial environments, where as workshops are usually designed with immediate significant specifications and cannot handle such large workloads. As in industries, workshops, units, as, uh, as usually compact multitasking, which can be, re can be stored in smaller space. These are lesser in the price than the industrial. So this article is a brief description of various kinds of tools used for metal and work, woodworking workshops. So we are going to talk about the, the kinds of machines that we can find in the workshop. Now, 
One of the machines is the milling machines for the workshop. You can see it in the picture. A milling machine is pictured there. So a milling machine is often misunderstood as the as a lathe work. A, uh, uh, it is a different. It's different from the lathe. In the lathe, the material is moved in order to achieve the desired shape. Or cutting, whereas cutting tools move as at a high speed for the same. But in a milling machine, it is the best tool for cutting metals to the customer's dimensions and shapes, especially if the parts or is if the parts are to be cut or shaped or to regular or uneven dimensions. Two types of milling devices are employed in workshops manually, manual and CNN milling. So the CN the CNC are computer controlled which automatically perform the which automatically perform the works that it is given. So the CNN machines are uh, machines like the ones shown on the pictures. These are machines that are programmed and they are put into computers. They are connected to computers. The design is done using the CAD. You remember uh, the, 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 the CAD design on the, the, the AutoCAD? The, the design is done using the AutoCAD and the, 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 the drawing is put in a flash or it is sent using a, a, a LAN cable that is connected from the machine to the computer, and then the machine is able to print. So two types of milling devices are employed in workshops, that is the manual CNC, uh, the manual, the workshop and manual and CNC milling. So then C and computer control, which automatically perform the process according to the set of computer specifications. Whereas the manual devices, the process is done manually and therefore takes time for completion. So those are the milling machines. What about the grinding machines? The grinding machines, a task like roughing or finishing of surfaces, finishing internal cylinders or balls, sharpening the cutting tools, removing rough projections from casting, cleaning, polishing, and buffing surfaces are achieved through the grinding equipment. So we have talked about that. And then uh, the tasks are carried out by the use of the grinding abrasive wheel, which moves abrasive particles, which, when con contact uh, with the workpiece, act as a tiny cutting tools, which cut chips from the workpiece to give the desired shape. So the, they are also called shaping machines. So grinding machines are also called shaping machines. So that is uh, that is the machine. You can see it is a shaping machine or the grinding machine. So the shaping machine is a popular form unit used in workshops. It is used for cutting curves, angles, and various shapes from the workpiece. So it comes in different sizes, specification, and tooling, and can be used for various metal or wood cutting requirements. As compared to lead milling or milling, Shaping or much affordable are the best tools for shaping flat metals and wood surfaces. So apart from these, various other kinds of tools like saws, drills, chisels, rittles, planners, shapers, etc., are employed in the workshop for efficient processes. So these, all these machine tools come in different specifications and can be selected as per the specific requirement for needs in the workshop. So for those looking to buy for the tools of a workshop can offer the best quality, reliable units, cost, and pricing. So uh, we have said that uh, th th these tools, they, can, they don't work alone. As much as uh, they, are, they are combined tools and can do a lot of work and they can make sure that work is done faster. Another thing that should be kept in mind is that small tools like the one that we had talked about, the drills, the chisels, the planner, and every, uh, each other tool, should not miss in the workshop because they help in doing the finishing or the final part, the finishing parts of the work that is to be done in the workshop. So another type of tool that we have is the drilling tool. And the drilling tools are here. And the drilling process, uh, in drilling process, holes are created in the metal. Holes are created in the metal through circular cylinders. A twist drill is used. 
for accomplishing this task. 75% of the metal cutting material is removed through the drilling operation. So the drill enters the work piece and cuts a hole which is equal to the diameter of the tool that was used for cutting the hole. So a drill has a pointed end which can easily cut a hole in the work piece. So uh, we have talked about the drilling, drilling tools and now we have uh, 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 big drilling tools like you can now see on the that shape. That is the spindle, the jack, the work piece. You can see now how it's working. It is a machine that is used to make holes on parts. This is a clamp. A clamp meter, the work of the clamp meter is to hold tightly the piece uh, that is to be worked on tightly on the surface. You can see the working table. Uh, another thing is turning tool. Turning is basically the lead operation by which the material is removed from the workpiece outside its diameter using a cutting tool. So the operation is performed on a lead, which is a machine where workpiece is adjusted and the tool is kept stationary. Yes, Simon, you had something to say? Okay. Uh, specifically designed for the turning operation and they help in cutting of the metal in the most precious way. So the workpiece is placed on the chunk and the machine rotates the stationary tool to cut the unwanted parts of the from the piece. So that is, uh, now you can see that turning tool. The turning tool is there and that is the workpiece and those are the chips. So when it goes there, it's used to sharpen or to cut or to remove some parts of the material that are not wanted. So another milling tool, another kind of a milling tool is here, uh, is one of the fundamental uh, we are talked about. This manufacturing process is less accurate than the turning process because the degree of the degree of freedom is high. So milling fabricate, fabricates the object which is not auxiliary uh, sub-symmetric. So the milling machine is required for its purpose along with the fixture, cutter, and of course, the workpiece. So the workpiece here is the material that is already shaped and it needs milling. So it is secure in the fixture, ready for being milled. The cutter is also secure to the machine. It is sharp, teeth and it rotates at a high speed. The workpiece is fed to the cutter and it removes the unwanted metal from the piece. So that is the milling tool. Then the grind, you can see the types of milling tools. The way this goes around, the moment it turns around, then it mills or it cuts the unwanted parts from the workpiece, this part. And then we talk about grinding. These are other, ty other types of grinding tools. You can see how they grind the workpiece the regulator and then the grinding wheel and then the regulating wheel. That is how they grind the surface. They are grinding now this uh, this blade. The chip formation, uh, how uh, in chip formation process materials are cut through mechanical means by using tools like milling cutters, uh, saws and lathes. So it is it is an integral part of the engineering development and machines for cutting tools. So that is uh, about that presentation. And I want us to go to the uh, last presentation. Uh, after that, then we will go to our discussions. Uh, it is more of uh, like a, a summary of what we have been talking about, the, the machine operation and machine tools. Now we have the turning and relating operation, drilling and related operation, milling, machine centers and turning centers, other machinery operations, and high-speed machining. So now uh, the machining, a material removal process in which a sharp cutting tool is used to mechanically cut away, uh, cut away material so that the desired part, so that desired part uh, geomet uh, geometrically remains. Now, the most common application is to shape the metal parts. Machining is the most versatile and accurate of all manufacturing processes in its capacity to produce a diversity of part uh, geometries and geometric features. A uh, and then the casting can also produce a variety of shapes 
but it lacks the precision and accuracy of the machining. Yes, Grace. Yes, Grace. If you are not saying something, just mute your mic so that we proceed. Classifications of the machined parts. Now we have the classifications there. We have the rotational parts, which are cylinder, cylindrical or disc shape. We have the non-rotational parts, also called the pr uh, prismatic, that is the block-like or plate-like. We can see the block-like shapes and the plate-like shapes of the machines. And then we have machine operation. Now each machine, uh, machining operation produces a characteristic part, geometric, Ge geometry due to two factors. Number one, the relative motion between the tool and the work part, that is generating the part geometry is determined by the feed trajectory of the turning tool. And then we have the shape of the cutting tool. And then we have the forming part geometry is uh, created by the shape of the cutting tool. Now generating shapes. These are how shapes can be generated. We can have a straight shape like in figure A. We can have a tapper like in figure B. We can have a, 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 a counter turning. We can have, like, you can see the counter turning. We can have, the, that is the counter turning. We can have the planing mill. This is the planing mill. It is planing on a plane. Then we have the profile milling, profile of the edges. You can see how the edges are done. So those are the types of the uh, gener shapes that can be generating using these machines. And then the forming and creating of shapes. Now you can see the form tool, it can form. You can see it's here and once a, a, a machine or a surface is formed, is rotated there, it forms the shape that is needed. And we can also see now the form turning. Uh, that, uh, we can now see the drilling. Uh, drilling tool is there, how the, it's forming the shape using that drill. And then we have the branching, branching is there. This is the surface, and then the work surface is there, and the branch is there. And when it's it, it's taken in, you can see it's making a shape, a shape of what that is the form surface that is already formed. So those are ways of how shapes can be formed. Combination of forming of, and generating to create shapes. Now we can have the threading. You can see how it's done. And then we have a form generated surface, you see, using a T-slot miling cutter milling cutter we have different types of tools and shapes we, we change the shapes depending on what we want now turning what is turning a single point cutting tool removes materials from a rotating workpiece to generate a cylindrical shape performed on a machine tool called a lathe and then very variations of turning that are performed on a, an a lathe that is facing contour turning chamfering, cut out, and threading. You can see them. And then uh, turning operations are there. Now how it is done, the work part is there. That is the original surface you can see. And now the one that has already been uh, been cut, that is the chip and the single point point, and then the new surface. You can see how it works, the turning operation. You just turn and a pit, uh, some parts are chipped off of the material that you want to do. Facing tool is fed uh, radially inward. Now, uh, you can see now the facing. The facing is there. And then it is fed inwards. You can see how it's done. Contour turning. Instead of feeding the tool parallel to the axis of the rotation tool, follows a contour plane. So you can see the contour plane. It is going that side. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, that is the other than straight so that's creating a contour form so that is how a contour form can be created chamfering cutting edge cuts an angle on the corner of the cylinder forming a chamfer you can see a chamfer uh, a cutting edge is uh, cut the angle it is now cut at a certain angle that is chamfering then cut off now cut off what is this now you can see a feed. It is digging deep. This thing is rotating as the cut off is cutting at a given depth. So the tool is fed radially into the rotating work at some location to cut off the end part of the edge. 
Then the threading, the threading is there. The point from the tool is fed linearly across the surface of the rotating work part, parallel to the axis of rotation at a large feed rate, thus creating threads. Lead screw thread, you can see there. And the diagram of an engine lathe showing its principal components. Methods of holding the work in a lathe. Now holding the work between centers, that is chunk, collet, and face plate. Holding the work, you can now see how it is being held. Now holding the work between the centers, now you can see the center, the center out center of the headstock, then the work part. It's there, it is held in between. That is now called the center. Then the dog club, that is to work driven from the dog plate. We have the chunk, a three jaw chunk, jaw three adjustable to the chunk work, that the work part. The collet way is here. The collet uh, with three slight slot slits, that is perm permit squeezing of the work. You can see the work bar is there. The sleeve advances forward to squeeze the collet. The face plate is there. The face plate, we said it is a place that already has some shapes. It holds it there, and then turning is done so that it can make the exact shape of that metal on that piece of working place. Then the turret lid, that is the tail stock replaced by turret the, uh, that holds up the six tools. That is tools rapidly brought into action by indexing and turret. Another one is the tools posts are replaced by four-sided turret and index four tools. And then applications, that is the high production of work that requires a sequence of cut on the parts. Checking machine uses a chuck in its spindle to hold work parts, no tail stock, so parts cannot be mounted between centers. Cutting tools action control automatically operator's job to load uh, and unload parts application, short lightweight parts. Those are the chunking machines. The bar machines, what are they? They're similar to chunking machine, except the collet replaces the chunk, permitting long bar stock to be fed through the head stock. Now, at the end of the machining cycle, a cutoff operation separates the new part. So highly automated uh, bar machines is often used. Applications, high production and rotation, rotational parts. We have automatic screwing machine. What are these machines? These are machines that are used to screw automatically. Some of the automatic bar machines are but smaller, same as uh, the automatic bar machines, but they are smaller. The applications. The high production of screws and similar uh, small hardware items, hence its name. So this machine is used to produ produce very many of these uh, smaller hardware items like nails, screws, nuts, and so on and so forth. And then we have the multiple spindle bar machines. There, there are more than one spindle, so multiple parts machine simultaneously by multiple tools. Example, we have six spindle automatic bar machine works on six parts of the at the same time. After each machining cycle, spindles, including the collets and work bars, are indexed, rotated to the next position. Our parts produced on the six spindle automatic bar machine and the sequence of the operation and producing of the parts you can now see the kinds of, of tools that are produced using those machines. The finished part, the, we can see the stop bars that are used to stop, and then the hold and the drills and the, all the forms that we have already talked about. Then we have boring machines. Boring, uh, these are, they are different between, the, the difference between boring and turning. Boring is the performance on the inside diameter of the existence hole. And turning is performing on the outside diameter of an existing cylinder. So, in effect, boring is an internal turning operation. And uh, the, uh, now, boring machines, we have the horizontal or vertical, refers to the orientation of the axis of the rotational of the 
spindle. So they can be either vertical or now you can see the boring machines. They can even use to make threads in in uh, uh, or to make some holes inside uh, uh, the a cylinder that is already existing. So this is a vertical boring mill uh, for large heavy work parts. Now like for even the motor parts and big machines. Then drilling. Drilling creates a hole in the work part like we had already said. Contrast with boring uh, which can only enlarge the existing hole. So cutting tool called a drill or a drill bit customary performed on the drill press. Drilling machine is a common tool for people. And then uh, through holes versus blind holes. Now what are the difference between through hole versus blind holes? So through holes, drill exists at the opposite side of the work and blind holes, the drill does not exist, uh, work on the opposite side. So the two types of holes, that is the through hole for one and then the blind hole, you can see the blind hole. It does, it does not go through. That means that uh, in, in, in a blind hole, you drill a hole, but it does not go through the surface. But in the, in the through hole, the hole goes down up to the end of that material. And then we have the rimming. Now what is rimming? Used to slightly enlarge a hole, provide a better tolerance on the diameter and improve the surface finish. So that is the rimming. Tapping. Tapping, uh, we had already talked about when we were doing uh, uh, tools and measurement and marking out. So tapping used to provide internal screw threads on an existing hole. So the internal threads are used, uh, you use a tapping to, to create threads. So if you want uh, maybe uh, for uh, something like a nut or something like a, some, a bolt, use the tapping to get the, 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 the internal screw threads, uh, the threads on the existing hole. And then the counter boring, counter boring that is it's happening from up and down. That provides a steep hole in which a large diameter follows a smaller diameter partially into the hole. So a large diameter follows a smaller diameter. So that is tapping. Then upright drill, you can see now that machine. The upright drill stands on the floor, the bench drill that is similar but smaller and mounted on the table or a bench. That is the upright drill press. Then the radial drill, the radial drill, that is a large drill press designed for large parts. This is designed for large parts and it can be used to make large holes in large industries. And others are called the work hold or drill press. The work part can be clamped in a vice feature, fixture or leg vice. That is the general purpose of work holder with two jaws. What is a fixture? A work holding device that is usually custom designed for the particular work part. What is a drill jig? Sometimes a fixture, but also produce, provides a means of guiding the tool during the drill. Then milling. Milling, the machine operation in which work is fed past the rotating tool with multiple cutting edges. So the axis of the tool rotation is perpendicular to feed direction, creates a planar surface, other geometric possible, either by cutting part or shapes, other factors and items. So milling is an interrupted cutting operation, cutting tool called a milling, cutter, cutting edges called teeth, machine tool called the milling machine. And then we have the speed and then two forms of the mill. You can see this one is milling horizontally, this one is milling vertically that is downwards. Peripheral of, uh, the, of milling versus face milling. Uh, uh, before we go there, I want you to, to, to say, to see the difference between the peripheral. The peripheral milling is uh, horizontally like the one that was given. And then the, the face milling is now milling on the top, that is on the surface. Then now the differences. Now the peripheral milling, the cutter axis is parallel to the surface, big build, and the cutter edging are, are on outside periphery of the cutter. 
And then what about the face milling? The cutter axis is perpendicular to the surface uh, being milled and the cutting edge of both the end and the outer surface peripheral of the periphery of the cutter. Now slab milling, what is the slab milling? You can even see the way it's placed, the positions. The basic form of the peripheral milling in which the cutter with it extends beyond the workplace of both sides. So it is milled uniformly at the same time. Slotting, what is slotting? It is the width of uh, the width of the cutter is less than the workplace with it, creating a slot in the work. You can see the slot is being created there. Conventional face milling, cutter overhangs work on both sides. So a conventional face milling is there. End milling, that is the cutter diameter is less than work with this, so the slot is cut into the part. Profile milling, form of, uh, form of end milling in which the outside periphery of the part is cut. Pocket milling, you can see the pocket milling, it is milling on the sides, on the edges of the hole. So another form of end milling used to mill shallow pockets into flat parts. You can see that it's called the pocket milling. Surface contouring, you can now see that is another form of uh, 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 machines th that can be, that is the ball nose cutting is sped back and forth across the work along the uh, curve linear path at close intervals to create the three-dimensional surface form. You can see how it's doing it. It is rotating, but it is already milling that part into a shape that is needed. Now you can see now the horizontal Nicola milling surface. Now it is milling horizontally. So the, the, the surface or the, the tool that is being fed is fed on the X axis, X, Y axis. So up, down, up, down. The vertical knee, so now when it moves up and down, that is the X, Y, Z. You can see it is moving on the Z direction. And the uh, and the new and column milling machine that is a ram type knee and column machine that is the ram can be adjusted in and out and the tool head can be shiveled machining centers highly automated machines tool capable of performing multiple machining operations under the cnc control in one setup with minimal human attention. So the typical operations are milling and drilling three, four, or five axes. Other features are automatic tool changing, pallet shuttles, and automatic work part positioning. So those are universal machines. You can now see when they are very big in the industry, you can now see how big they are. And then we have the cinematic machines, the highly automated capable of multiple machining operations under the computer control in one setup with minimal human attention. The CNC machine are there now and they are automated and they can do the milling. Uh, that is the axis turning center. You can see how it is working. Now, mill turn centers, they, they are highly automated machine tools that can perform turning, milling, and drilling operations on the work part. So they can position a cylindrical part uh, in a specified angle and the rotation cutting tool, e.g. the milling, cuttery, and cuttery, that is, and can, uh, can machine features into outside surface of the part. So the conventional turning center cannot stop work part at a defined angular position and does not possess rotating tool spindles. So you can see we have different ways the machining can work. And then we have now the operation of the multi mill turn center. You can see how it moves uh, when it is put. We use that time, that is the turning tool. The milling cutter is there. 
the drill bit is there. So all of them, when they're used together, that is how they can appear. And then the wheel flat, which part in the program angular position, the drill hole, the part in the same program position, and the cut off. So the shaping and planning machine, similar operations, both use a single point cutting tool moving linearly relative to the work part. You can now see the shaping, it, it shapes, it gives a shape that it is there, it is required. And most of these work surfaces are either wood or metallic, as we had said. Then the shaping and planing are still a straight flat surface is created in both operations that is interrupted cutting subjects tools to impact loading when entering the work. Now, low cutting speeds due to start and stop motion, then the usual tooling single point high speed steel tools. We have components of the shaper, you can see it there. Then open side planner is there. The broaching. What is broaching? Moves and multiple tooth cutting tools linear relative to work in direction of the tool axis. So it makes marks. You can see how it is makes that this, this is the tool and the speed of running. So it is making the ridges on the work surface. That is now the broaching. What are the advantages of broaching? It uh, a good service finish close uh, tolerance, variety of work uh, shapes uh, possi are possible. And then the cutting tools called a broad, and then owning uh, to complicated and often custom shape geometry. Tools is expensive. The tool is very expensive. That is one of its disadvantages. Internal broaching. You can see how it, the, the broaching tool can do internally and make different shapes in, in uh, performed in internal surface uh, of a whole. And, a, st a, st a starting hole must be present, that is by using a drill in parts or to insert the broad at, uh, at beginning of the stroke. Sewing. Uh, we have also sewing machines. Now this cuts narrow slits in work uh, by a tool co consisting of a series of narrow shaped teeth. Tool called uh, a saw blade, typical, typical functions Separate a, work, a separate a work part into two pieces, cut off unwanted portions of part. Then we can now see the sewing tool. The, the, the feed is there, meaning it is being, uh, that is the work now. Then the blade is there. As you can see other kinds of tools of saws are there. The vertical linear contour, co continuous motion of blades bl uh, or, or band saw so, so blade, which is a form of the endless flex loop of the teeth on one edge. You can see it is moving like a, a, the conveyor belts where they move up and down and they are cutting the work workplaces. Another type is a rotational tool. You can see now the saw blade is there and it is circular. Now, uh, high-speed machine machining, cutting at speed of significant, significantly higher than those used in conventional machine operation and persistent thread uh, throughout the history of the machine. Machining is higher and higher cutting speeds. So at, pre at present, there is the, renewable, the renewed interest in high-speed machines due to the potential of faster production rates shorter lead times and reduced costs. Then high speed machining, you can see the high speed machining. Now they can cut things like aluminum, cast and that. And then uh, we have uh, the ratios are there. Requirements of the high speed machines, that is the special bearing design for high uh, revolutions per minute, high feed rate capacity, the CNC motion controls, that is using the big machines that we have talked about, uh, look ahead features to avoid undershooting under and overshooting tool path, now balanced cutting tools, tool holders and spirals to minimize vibrations, coolant delivery systems, 
that provide higher pressures than the convenient machine, the, the chipping control. Uh, and uh, another thing is aircraft industries, they are, they, are, they are used now the applications of the high speed machine used in aircraft industries, machining large aircraft, uh, too much metal removal, that is most of the milling, and also used in multiple machining operations on aluminum, to produce automotive, computer, or mechanical, medical components, quick tool changes and tool path uh, control, important die and mold industry, fabricating complex uh, geometric form of the hand materials. So those are some of the basic things that we have discussed about the workshop machinery. You realize that in the workshop, so many things can be done. And now a question comes, why do you think are we learning this? Sometimes most of these things are done by the mechanical engineering guys. But as an electrical engineer, remember that all these machines are powered using electricity and you need to know how they work. So that once you, sometimes you can be taken uh, to work uh, in an industry as a maintenance engineer, you'll be able to know what, how the machine works, how it means and what it can do so that you can also participate in the milling process. So I now want us to break and go to the discussions immediately. I've already posted the discussions in the portal and these discussions are a must uh, participate because they are going, uh, the, the, your attendance is also going to be taken on discussion despite uh, being taken in this blue button. And then after we are done with that, then we'll come back again to the big blue button and wind up. So the discussion is going to take uh, 40 minutes. So this is nine, 36. So I'm assuming that from 9.40, we are going to take another 40 minutes. So by the time we uh, it is 10.20, uh, we'll come back to the big blue button and then wind up and finish the lesson. So uh, be, uh, if there's no uh, question before we break to the discussion, you go to the portal, click on the portal and you will get the discussion there. I've already posted things to discuss. So everybody must attend there and I'll be there looking at what you are doing and answering the questions there. So we have to participate in the discussion. I want to hear any one or two questions before we can go to the discussions. And then we'll be coming back at 10.20 to the big blue button again for the, part, the, the next part of the lesson. So can I hear a question for anybody who did understand something so that I explain before we go to the discussion in the portal? Somebody with a question? You can unmute your mic so that I hear you. Unmute your mics. I want us to go to the discussion. Unmute your mic so that you can talk to me. Yes, Francis. Samuel Maina. So let us go to the discussion. I've already released you. We are going to the discussion. And I'm waiting for your comments there so that I can uh, discuss. I've already saved the attendance in the big blue button. So we are going to the discussion. And I'm also going to save the attendance there. So let us go back to the portal. And